Thank you. And uh, let me thank the organizers for inviting me to attend this conference. I'm not a Lefschetz person, really. And so I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to talk to people who speak at least a part of my language. So what I want to talk about today is somewhat related to the problem that I spoke about in the problem session. I spoke about a problem that I got in my linear algebra class when I was a uh, an undergraduate that uh, drove me nuts, namely finding Jordan forms for, uh, say, five by five matrices. And what I'm going to talk about now today is a problem that I got as a first year graduate student, where uh, the professor, uh, Professor Jacobson, had a tendency towards the end of the semester to give out problems where we were supposed to find the Laskiner, the decomposition of some ideal that he cooked up and gave us to find the Laskiner, the decomposition. So we, as grad students, sat in a common office room. It must have been about a dozen of us, all of us in Jake's class. And my question can best be explained by showing you the next slide, if I can. I'm not sure I can because I'm not sure where the page down key is on this. Ah, there we are. That's the page down key. Okay. What would happen if the guy sitting at the desk over there said to you, okay, I've got the damned ideals, but, uh, and he tells you what they are. So now you've got the ideals, and the only thing you've got to do to solve Jake's homework problem is first of all, prove their prime. And for each one of these ideals, find an element x so that that prime ideal is exactly the annihilator ideal of that element right that's the problem so the problem is how do you find those x's well you say to yourself what's the problem i mean i just look at the annihilator ideal of this ideal p that my colleague over there gave me and pick an element well certainly that annihilates the ideal but why is that the only why is that ideal the only thing in the annihilator of that element? There could be other elements in there, right? So that's the, the theme of this talk. Now, where was that page down key there? Ah, so the subject of this talk is the following result, uh, which is a, it's a partial, it's a way to get at these things. It's a question of how do I find it, as we'll see as the talk goes on. So it's a theorem that says, let R be a commutative Noetherian ring, and P and a, an ideal in R, which happens to be an associated prime. Then P is its own double annihilator ideal. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, Chris and Junzo and I talked about this back in 2019, when both of those guys were in Göttingen for a couple of months. And uh, we couldn't quite find an answer at that point. And then came the lockdown. And we all know what that did to all of us. And in particular, for me, it cut me off from the internet because I don't have, uh, I don't have any, any internet hookup at home. And I officially could not get into the building of course i have a key to everything but <laughs> that's the privileges of a german professor Tony. um i have a key to everything but i mean going into the building would have been a violation of the the lockdown rules and i could have been arrested actually being germany right okay so uh, we couldn't do anything about this i thought about this and thought about it and thought about it and uh the upshot of this is that I came up with uh, an identity dual Macaulay. So this is a, an identity involving two ideals in an arbitrary commutative ring with unit. Now, of course, in Macaulay's case, uh, what he proved is this identity. But he proved it in polynomial rings, right? Because that's what Macaulay does. He plays with polynomial rings. So in Macaulay's case, he did it in the case of polynomial rings, but Gerbner gives him the credit for this result um, in a very, very lovely paper where Gerbner gives a very elementary 
proof takes about a page and a half of computation, but it's totally elementary. It's nothing but quote linear algebra unquote. Um, and it gives you this rather strange identity uh, between two ideals A, B, or in this double dot construction. Now, if you're not a fan of the double dot construction, I understand that. I certainly wasn't as a student, but it's a very, very powerful tool. And this has as a corollary that if R is a commutative ring with unit and B is any old ideal, then the triple annihilator idea of B is B itself. Yeah. So those were two things that uh, I discovered during the lockdown. And I want to tell you what, they, what they're good for. Um, so I should have said something back at the previous slide. Uh, in fact, even back here. No, this was the right one. This identity of Macaulay's, this, this four, this, this, this four term thing. This is what's in back of Macaulay's uh, proof that Macaulay duality works. Okay, that's why he, he did this. This is the way he proved Macaulay duality worked. And it's also what's in back of uh, what I refer to as the Nerda involution theorem. So the Nerda involution theorem says that uh, if you have, oops, an irreducible ideal and another ideal J. And you can make this construction, J goes to for J containing I. Okay, that's a construction. It sends uh, over ideals of I into over ideals of I, easy to see, and it's an involution. That's what I call the Nerda involution theorem. And that's why Grubner wrote this paper because Nerda had a proof of this result that it's an involution using elimination theory. She felt it was too complicated, too long, too ugly to publish. So never published it. And given the history of Emmy Nerda, nobody knows what ever happened to this manuscript. Um, and Gerbner was one of Emmy Nerda's students in Göttingen at some point. And some years after she told him the result, he figured out how to prove this result uh, using this identity of Macaulay's. And that's why he proved that identity for arbitrary commutative Noetherian rings with unit, because he wanted to verify this result of Emmy Nerda's. So this is the Nerda involution theorem. And I is an irreducible idea. Okay. Okay. So Right, then, then you get this result that I showed you before. Okay. Now this corollary, uh, this, this corollary about if A is an ideal in R, which is the annihilator ideal of some ideal B, might be a principal ideal, so it's the annihilator ideal of an element maybe, then A is its own double annihilator. So this is kind of an interesting fact that I didn't know. And uh, when Junzo and, and Chris were in Göttingen, we discovered by internet search um, a paper of a guy by the name of Landsberg, right? S.F. Landsberg, uh, who proves this uh, for, we think, <laughs> right? We think he proves this as though for the minimal prime ideals of a ring R. So if P is an associated prime, 
which happens to be minimal, we think Landsberg proved this double annihilator result. And here the result is if you have a commutative Noetherian ring and P is an associated prime of R, meaning it's the annihilator ideal of an element, so the annihilator ideal of a principal ideal, then P is its own double annihilator. That's the explanation of the title for the talk. And this has a number of amusing consequences. Please ignore the marginal notes. I tried to take them out this morning, but uh, didn't work. Tech is something I, dis I despise. I, I can only put it that way. Um, we obtain the following result. Uh, let's say that an element W and R is a witness to a prime ideal P being an associated prime of R. Remember the associated primes of R are prime ideals, which are the annihilator ideal of an element. Um, that element I'll call a witness to the fact that it's an associated prime. So how do you find the witnesses is basically what the question is in back of this. And here's an answer if the prime P happens to be a maximal associated prime ideal of R, meaning that amongst all the associated prime ideals of R, it's not included in another one. It's maximal in that sense. Then the witnesses are exactly the non-zero elements and it's annihilated ideal. Now that's a nice result because that tells you if you have an ideal that's unmixed, you know how to find witnesses for the prime ideals, if you know the prime ideals which you're associated to. Okay, right, so thank you for your attention. This is uh, the last talk at this conference and I don't wanna keep anybody from missing their plane, but I also would like to give a big thanks to the organizers again.